the best camera is the one you have with you. I feel like every photographer likes to say that. And I would too, but that would make me a hypocrite. You see, I'm the guy who overpacks. I can't decide if I want to shoot film or digital. So I end up bringing both. One for the vibes, one for the autofocus. If I go for a walk, I have to lug around 10 pounds of gear, just in case. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I can't for the life of me take a good picture with my phone. And it's not because my phone's trash either. This is my Pixel 7a. It's not the best, but it can certainly spit out a good image in the right hands, as evidenced by my fellow Pixel owners on the gram who make me question my ability to call myself a photographer. But instead of avoiding the things I suck at, I'm going to force myself to take a picture that I like with my phone for the next hundred days. Here's day one. Subscribe to follow me along on this journey. Peace. For day two of trying to suck less at phone photography, I decided to channel my inner visco girl and go shoot some flowers in my backyard. It was cloudy, so perfect for those moody vibes. I spent 20 minutes testing different angles and trying not to draw the ire of these bees that were just chilling there pollinating, but static shots just weren't doing it for me. So I played around with some long exposures, and that's when I felt my inner visco girl power level surging. A heavy dose of Lightroom Mobile later, and this is what we've got. Let me know what you think, and subscribe to follow me along on this 100 day photo journey. Peace. It's day three of trying to suck less at phone photography, or TT Slap for short. Today, I have a two for one for you. I went to my cousin's house in the afternoon when the harsh midday sun was casting shadows on the side of his garage, and it caught my eye. This isn't his house, but it's a super rough approximation of what I saw. To some, it's just a wall. To me, it's also a wall. A wall full of opportunity. A few puzzled stairs and a healthy dose of light removal later, and this is the final photo. This next one was shot inside his house. The blinds in his sunroom were almost completely closed, letting in just slivers of light. After shooting the first photo, I had my eye out for interesting interplays between light and shadow, and this one was just too good to pass up. It's simple, but kind of satisfying to look at. Let me know which shot you like better, and subscribe to follow me on this photo journey. Peace. It's day four of trying to suck less at phone photography, the series where I try to suck less at taking pictures with my phone, by taking pictures every day with my phone. The day started off slow, but ended up being pretty busy for me and my family. My aunt's moving back overseas, so I spent the afternoon moving 50 pound boxes with my Olympic athlete of a sister before heading to the China Buffet for their send off meal. I hadn't found my photo for the day yet, and some might say this is a cop out, but I kid ye not. I literally stepped out of the car, looked down, and saw the sun shining on the busted up asphalt and thought, Nice. So today's photo is a picture that speaks to my Milwaukee roots. If you know, you know. After dinner, we dropped off my aunt and her two kids, Tuesday Adams and Jung Cook, said our goodbyes, and here we are. Let me know what you think of today's photo, and subscribe to follow me on this journey. Peace. Hello there. It's day five of trying to suck less at phone photography. As seems to be a running theme with this series, I ran into today's photo by looking down at the ground. My dad's been doing some work around the house, filling up gaps and cracks in the pavement before winter comes and the ice pulls a choji on us. I'd describe his work style as organized chaos. He keeps his tools laying about in no particular order, but he can always seem to find what he needs when he needs it. I might have taken after him. Just a little bit. I spent some time watching him work, helping him grab stuff here and there. I was grabbing him another tube of caulk when I saw these gloves he threw on the grass. And that's when I shot this photo. The sunlight is kind of carrying it, but it's fun. I could see it being the album cover to some edgy teen's debut EP. But what do you think? Let me know, and subscribe to follow me on this journey. Peace. How's it going? It's day six of trying to suck less at phone photography. Today, I kind of cheated. You see, it's opening day of the China Lights, the touring light show that comes to Milwaukee every year. It's always a grand old time. They've got giant light displays with RGB that puts even the sweatiest of gaming setups to shame, and performances that make you realize just how uncoordinated you really are. This year's theme is Nature's Glow. It was my first year back since lockdown. Prior to that, I dragged my sister out every year to the botanical gardens, even in the cold, which she still hasn't forgiven me for. This time around, we got our family to go with us. It's gotten a bit expensive over the years, but I put it on my sister's card, so I'm not complaining. Anyway, 
Here's today's photo. I call it cheating because it's one of those things that's nearly impossible to take a bad picture of. But let me know what you think and subscribe to follow me on this journey. Peace. It's day seven of trying to suck less at phone photography. And sometimes this profession makes you look stupid to the people around you who have no idea what you're doing and probably don't care either. Like my neighbor who was cutting her grass when I pulled out a step ladder and tried not to fall while shooting my basketball hoop. The sun was setting and as terrified as I am to look like an idiot, I couldn't stop myself from trying to get this shot. The light hitting the net was just Fleo! I've been trying to photograph this hoop for years, and this is the first shot that I'm even kind of happy with. But let me know what you think, and subscribe to follow me on this 100-day photo journey. Peace. It's day eight of trying to suck less at phone photography. It's about time I give you a behind the scenes look at this jank production. I film these videos in my room and what you see behind me is a Walmart shelf full of manga and knickknacks that's one pound away from collapsing in on itself. At the very top, I've got the most Pinterest mom fake flower arrangement I've ever seen and I can't for the life of me remember where it's from. I was playing around with lighting to film TT Slap when I looked up and saw it. The light was casting a harsh shadow on the wall and my edgy teen senses started tingling. So I hopped up on my table, avoided getting final destination by my ceiling fan, and got to shooting. This is what I came up with. It's not great, but I'm sure I could get some edgelord points if I post it with some deep misattributed quote. What do you think? Let me know, and subscribe to follow me on this photo journey. Peace. It's day nine of trying to suck less at phone photography, and today's photo kind of landed at my feet, literally. My sister and I just got back from shopping, and as I was getting out of the car, I noticed this yellow stepladder thing leaned up against the side of the garage. I'm not sure where it came from or if anyone even uses it, but it was the first time I noticed these symmetrical lines underneath one of the steps. To spice it up even more, the headlights were reflecting off the wall and hitting it from the side, casting some pretty heavy shadows. I'm like the kid in the meme who really likes amusement parks. While the rest of the world has no reaction, I see something like this and I'm like, Okay, let's go. This is the shot. To anybody else, it's unremarkable. But to me, it's pretty cool. But let me know what you think and subscribe to follow me on this journey. Peace. It's day 10 of trying to suck less at phone photography. And this is the closest I'll ever get to being a Nat Geo photographer. My cousin and her husband have a big fish tank in their living room. I think it was a bit of a contentious addition at first, but we've all come to enjoy watching the little fishies swim around, plotting their escape. We stopped by to say hello, and I figured I'd pull out my best wildlife photographer impression. I spent five minutes with my phone pressed up to the glass, trying to work out some sort of composition. Turns out this kind of photography requires a lot of patience, and it makes you look pretty weird. But here's what I came up with. It could be better, could be worse. Let me know what you think, and subscribe to follow me on this photo journey. Peace. Will I actually finish this 100 day photo journey? It is decidedly so. It's day 11 of trying to suck less at phone photography. And sometimes this photo stuff is all about being in the right place at the right time. Like chilling in the backyard, solving the day's wordle as a plane flies overhead, leaving a trail that cuts through the clouds. Have a serendipitous day, folks. Peace. It's day 12 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and there's a big old spider chilling on the side of my garage. I don't know how long it's been there, but it gave me a spook when I was shooting hoops. So naturally, I decided to shoot it. With my phone, of course. Spiders are good for the earth, even if they are kind of creepy. Oh, that's not very nice. I looked it up, and I don't think it's venomous. I'm not sure if we have any venomous spiders here in Milwaukee. But if I'm wrong, I stuck my hand stupidly close to it. Natural selection, I guess. Take care, y'all, and be nice to spiders. Peace. It's day 13 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and this is me trying to photograph a leaf. I was walking by and noticed the sun illuminating small sections of this plant my dad's been taking care of for the last four years. It's one of the many plants my dad's got growing around the house. I don't know why, and I can't remember when it started, but for the last few years, he's been randomly coming home with plants picked and purchased from all kinds of places and people. I take after my mom, so I tend to kill every plant I touch. So I think I'll just stick to photographing them. For this shot, I went for detail and faked a macro lens with an extreme crop. I think it kind of looks like a painting. 
You know those mass-produced ones you can pick up for 15 bucks in the home section of TJ Maxx? Like those kind of paintings. But let me know what you think, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. It's day 14 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and today's photo was a shot in the dark. My dad's very serious about his lawn. He just planted some grass seed a few days ago, and every few nights he goes out and waters any patchy bits. I caught him in the act today, and thought I'd test out the low-light capabilities of my Pixel 7a. I'm impressed, and though it's not the most exciting shot, this is the type of image I enjoy making the most. Documenting people, places, or things that we normally never think twice about, and finding some sort of beauty in the mundane. Whack. Let me know what you think, and go look for beauty in unexpected places today. Peace. It's day 15 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and I physically cannot drink water like a normal human being. I think my form of fragile masculinity is trying to drink water faster than anyone else around me. I tried to behave myself today since I was visiting family, so instead of chugging this bottle, I decided to see what it'd look like if I took all the air out of it. And when I held it to the light, I saw today's photo. Some might call it lazy photography, but I say we're back to the abstract, folks. It kind of reminds me of ice. But what do you see? Let me know, and I'll catch you later. Peace. It's day 16 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and today was a good day. I played catch with my Olympic athlete of a sister and caught a sunset on a fishing trip with our folks. I saw these two people sitting on a bench by the lake, and it reminded me of Forrest Gump. And thinking of Forrest Gump made me think about those people, and the thousands of other people we'll cross paths with in our lifetimes, each with unique stories filled with rich tales of triumph and sorrow. I wondered what their stories were. And though I'll never know, I'm grateful they sat there at that exact moment. They'll never know it, but with these photographs, they became a tiny piece of my story. And I think that's pretty cool. Take care, y'all. I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace. It's day 17 of trying to suck less at phone photography. Fall is upon us, and I really thought this fly was a mosquito. It was just chilling here on this leaf for a solid minute before it realized my phone was getting alarmingly close to its face. I usually leave nature alone, but sometimes I get the urge to pretend I'm a wildlife photographer. And this is about the closest I'll ever get to Nat Geo. So let me have my moment, please. I was on a late afternoon walk with my dad. Milwaukee has a bunch of these small parks that you wouldn't really know about unless you lived in the area. This one is my favorite. I used to come here all the time and do laps trying to hatch eggs in Pokemon Go. Good times. I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace. It's day 18 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and this is a mooncake. My mom buys a tin of these every year for the Mid-Autumn Festival, which this year began on Friday, September 29th, the 15th day of the 8th lunar month. It's a time to get together with family, celebrate the moon at its fullest, light incense, make wishes, and of course, eat mooncakes. They come in all different kinds, but my family always gets mooncakes with the salty egg yolk filling. It's dense, but quite beautiful in its way. I couldn't really photograph the moon with my phone, so I figured a mooncake would be the perfect stand-in. I had no idea what I was doing. But then again, I never really know what I'm doing. I just try my best to have fun while doing it. Take care, y'all. Peace. It's day 19 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and you're probably wondering what I'm doing. Take a guess. Am I A, taking a selfie, B, scanning for bed bugs, or C, creating a sick edit? If you guessed A, B, or C, you're wrong. The answer is D, running out of ideas and photographing my sister's bed sheets. They have these interesting lines that remind me of sand waves. As you can tell, she's very particular about her sleeping quarters. Her bed is always neatly made and guarded from any outsiders by this green blob thing which stands in stark contrast to my space that's more studio than bedroom. I haven't had a bed since I was a freshman living in the dorms, and even then, me and my roommate would take turns sleeping on my Walmart futon that ended up being my bed senior year. Funny how things come full circle, huh? I'll catch y'all later. Peace. It's day 20 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and I actually left the house today. My dad wanted to go fishing, so we headed downtown just as the sun finished setting. I hadn't shot my photo for the day yet, and I was losing hope as the skies around us kept getting darker. It's been one of those days where I can't seem to come up with anything. But I couldn't walk away with nothing, 
So I went back to what I know best, documenting what's happening right in front of me, which in that moment happened to be my dad casting for salmon and occasionally shining a light on his glow-in-the-dark spinner, a familiar sight I'd seen a million times but never thought to photograph. He didn't end up catching anything, and neither did I, but it was a good time. I suppose that's all that matters. Peace. It's day 21 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and this is my sister's cutting mat. I always used to steal it in high school for art projects, and I dinged this thing up pretty bad. It gave up on healing itself a long time ago, but I never noticed how bad it was until I saw it today. You wouldn't know it if you looked at it on a flat surface, but with the light pointed at the right angle, it's pretty gnarly. Probably the result of a younger me compensating for using a dull blade with brute force. A recipe for deep gouges and plenty of flesh wounds. They used to wake me up when I was rushing to finish projects hours before they were due. Back when I thought I was the next Picasso, and I wanted nothing more than to call myself an artist. Though I probably should have realized earlier that I wasn't cut out for the whole fine artist thing when I couldn't cut a straight line even with a straight edge. It's day 22 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and I went fishing again. Or, more accurately, I went chasing pavements while my dad fished. Again. Because, one, I refuse to buy a fishing license, and two, it's probably my favorite Adele song. Even though I was literally chasing pavement for a photograph, not ruminating on love or heartache from said emotion. Because that's a lot of work, and I thought it was a cool pattern. Though you could argue that this photo journey of mine is figuratively like chasing pavements. It might very well be a fruitless pursuit. But you and I won't know until we get to day 100, will we? Take care, y'all. I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace. It's day 23 of trying to suck less at phone photography. And I've been working on my shot. But in the interest of self-preservation, I've blurted out. It's more Joe Kim Noah than Chef Curry, if you know what I mean. It's been getting colder here in Milwaukee which means I won't be able to shoot hoops in the backyard for much longer. The jumper was feeling a little less broken tonight, and I was getting in the zone until I looked up and had to drop everything to shoot this instead. Looks like it's time for the birds to get on out of here. Wisconsin winters do kinda suck, so I'll probably have to wait half a year for the ice to melt before I can get back to fixing this jumper of mine. It's day 24 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and my folks wanted to do hot pot today. So we took a trip to the Asian grocery store. I used to prefer the American stores when I was a kid, and it wasn't until I grew up and got the chance to visit the motherland that I could finally appreciate the smells and chaos of these places. This is about as close to Asia as you can get without draining your bank account and hopping on a plane. At the checkout line, I saw these worn out stickers on the floor that took me back to the days of lockdown. But outside the context of a pandemic, it almost felt like a personal attack. See, life's been getting a bit stagnant lately, and I think it's time for me to stop waiting for life to happen. Maybe it was a divine sign, if you believe in that sort of thing. Or maybe, I'm just losing it. Who knows? It's day 25 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and I'm going to shut up for once and let you look at these flowers in peace. Take care, folks. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. It's day 26 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and if you've run out of things to photograph, like me, just do what I do, and follow the light. Right around golden hour, the sun makes everything in this house glow with a warmth that takes me back to simpler times. A friend who used to come around every day in the summertime told me that the light just hit different in our house. Maybe it's the windows or its position relative to the setting sun, or maybe it's that dastardly feeling. Nostalgia amplifying the good memories in ways that make our current lives feel bleak in comparison. Maybe. But I'd like to think that the best is yet to come, which is why I'm pushing forward with this 100-day photo journey, even though it's getting a bit tough to find new things to shoot every day. It's day 27 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and I'm curious if your bathroom also comes with a window. Our half-bath by the kitchen has one, and I've never quite understood it, 
Sure, it foregoes the need for extra ventilation, but I'm not exactly sure having a literal window into your private business is comforting. Anyhow, I think the window seals are starting to get a bit wonky, seeing as it looks like an oil slick near the edges of this pane. I didn't do anything to address it, but I did photograph it, and it's pretty cool. Let me know what you think, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace. It's day 28 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and let me tell you about the time I pissed off my dad. This is spray paint on his garage floor. More specifically, spray paint I spray painted without his permission in high school, without knowing it would stick around for half a decade no matter how much I scrubbed. Some of it's from my days desperately trying to enter the canon of the almighty avant-garde, but most of it is a lingering reminder of the lovesick poet I used to be. The kind of sad sap who would sit in the sweltering summer heat, jerry-rigging carnival games for a girl's elaborately themed birthday party. My dad's usually a pretty mellow guy, so the memory of him yelling at me when he walked in on the aftermath of my one-man sweatshop operation sticks with me. I laugh at it now, even though it meant so much to me back then. Standing here now, it's no more than a faint echo of a time long since past. It's day 29 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and my dad is currently in his e-bike phase. After years of internal debate, he finally bought a pair for him and my mom. They just arrived, so naturally he wants to take them out as often as possible before winter comes. We hit the local trail, trying our best not to become those e-bike people. At the end, we saw these birds gathering on the overhead power lines. It reminded me of Daphne du Maurier's The Birds. I read a shortened version in high school, overanalyzing it as annoying tryhard English students do. It stuck with me over the years. Now every time I see birds, I can't help but put on my best Hitchcock impression, make it moody, and slap on the grain. It's day 30 of trying to suck less at phone photography. And it's that time of year again, folks. When the leaves change color, everything becomes pumpkin spice flavored, and the urge to cuff outweighs all common sense. Yep, fall is finally upon us. So whip out your best flannel and go bobbing for apples, or whatever people do in autumn. I'm lame, so I'll just be here waiting for the great pumpkin with the homie Linus. It's day 31 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and it's officially Halloween though you wouldn't know it if you went outside. Here in Milwaukee, there's snow on the ground, and all the kids went trick-or-treating on the weekend, so I guess it's just another day. I wanted to shoot something thematically appropriate, but the closest thing to spooky we've got around this unfestive household might be this decaying statue that came with the house when we moved in. It's seen better days, but the scariest thing about it might not be its physical state, but what it symbolizes. The unfettered passing of time, some of us forgotten by it, all of us slowly but surely breaking down. A reminder that I'm just messing with you. It's not that deep. Or is it? It's day 32 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and I'm out here shoveling snow in October. I shouldn't be surprised given that I've lived in Wisconsin all my life, but here we are once again. Unfortunately, this isn't the nice fluffy snow either. This is the nasty wet kind that weighs a ton and turns everything into a slip and slide. I managed to get the driveway and sidewalk cleared pretty quickly, but not before I snagged a photo like a true Gen Zer. Behold my footprints in the snow. Basic? Of course. But aesthetic nonetheless. Let me know what you think, and I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace. It's day 33 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and if you happen to be walking outside my house in the afternoon and saw a disheveled, racially ambiguous male pointing a phone at the window, I assure you I wasn't photographing you. I was shooting the blinds, specifically this corner here. Now, if you've been following me on this 100-day photo journey, which you should, by the way, you'd know I have a strange affinity for what most people would consider unremarkable, like the sunlight casting a shadow on the blinds. Admittedly, it's not all that interesting on the surface, but like most things in life. It's all about your angle, your perspective. Up close, it's dusty and almost unrecognizable. It kind of reminds me of roof shingles or maybe even a tile floor. But tell me, what do you see? It's day 34 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and I'm starting to scrape at the bottom of my creative barrel here. 
Not gonna lie, I've photographed this a million times before, but never with my phone. Our front door has these decorative glass accents which do wonders for letting in light, but probably take off a few points on defense. It took me a minute to shoot it, as it always does. Not because it's a particularly difficult shot, but because you've got to get the camera as straight as possible for it to look right, and so you don't have to spend 20 minutes distorting the image to fix it later on. Remember folks, it's always better to do it in camera, even if it takes an extra few minutes, than to spend unnecessary time editing out avoidable mistakes. It takes you away from all the fun stuff, like, you know, actually shooting. Anyway, here's my annual front door shot, Pumpkin Spice Edition. The colors are kind of carrying it, but let me know what you think. It's day 35 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and I recently discovered that I can solve this. Now I realize that that's not that impressive of a feat for most folks, but it is for me. You see, this 5x5 has been collecting dust in my puzzle collection for the last six years. I bought it, couldn't figure out how to solve it, and promptly gave up. Then I got sick last week, picked it up, and it suddenly made sense half a decade later. It's a bit of a long story that requires some overdramatic storytelling, so if you're curious, I made a full video you can watch on my channel. But we're not here for that poorly placed self-promotion. We're here to try and get better at phone photography, and this here 5x5 is our subject for today. I went for something basic, just a straight, clean overhead shot. Then I realized it was too boring, so I cheated and tessellated it in Photoshop, and now it looks like some strange Chuck E. Cheese vintage tiled floor. I kinda dig it, but let me know what you think. It's day 36 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and this is the not-so-aesthetic side of fall. We've got a giant pile of wet leaves in front of the house taking up half the road, a bunch of fallen leaves littered across the driveway and clogging the gutters. They're pretty in their own way, but it's one of those things that's difficult to capture in a still photograph. There's just too much going on. So I went back to something my old boss once said. He told me that when you're on a shoot, and there's too much visual information to process, don't try capturing it all. Just put down the camera, take it in for a moment, and focus on the details that help tell the story of the greater whole. I look kind of suspicious doing that in the rain, but it was well worth it. Not sure why, but this particular leaf stood out to me, and after a bit of trial and error, I found a shot I liked. Color wasn't doing it for me, so we went monochrome today. It's only kind of basic. But let me know what you think. It's day 37 of trying to suck less at phone photography. And giving gifts is hard. You could go with a classy timepiece for the undigitized in your life, a Rubik's Cube for the kiddos who are perpetually glued to their iPads, perhaps some film for the hipsters, or maybe a book with actual pages, or a Bluetooth speaker, or a hat, or maybe the most universal gift of them all, a wad of cash. Or if that's all too materialistic for you, you could always make something, like this here bucket of popsicle sticks, for example. An ex gifted this to me years ago, and it somehow escaped the purge that occurred a year after she dumped me. It's actually a pretty sweet gift. We were an indecisive pair, so she wrote different places and restaurants we could visit on these sticks we could pull at random. I didn't appreciate it much at the time, but looking back, it's probably one of the most thoughtful gifts I've ever received, despite it literally being just popsicle sticks. It's day 38 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and this is a wooden mannequin that's supposed to help you draw. This one came in a cheap art kit I bought back when I was a kid, back when all I could dream about was becoming a manga artist, which was before I started high school, where I realized that drawing is hard, and I suck at it. So I gave up, and picked up a camera instead. As a result, this thing has been stuck on my shelf ever since, in what looks to be a flossing stance. I haven't messed with it in years, but it caught my eye today. Something about the way the light was hitting it made me want to shoot it. With my phone, of course. And I have to say, for someone who doesn't really do still life photography, I think it's pretty neat. For a singular static image of a small section of my cheap Walmart shelf, it tells you a lot about me, and the person I used to be. It's day 39 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and these are my mom's bananas. They may look a little different than what you're used to, that's because these are no ordinary bananas. These are the Thai variety that she has to go to great lengths to procure. Here's what one looks like next to a standard Chiquita. Now I'm sure at least one of you is expecting a dirty joke here, but I try to keep it family friendly, and come on, that's literally low hanging fruit. So instead, we're just gonna photograph it. When they're all laid out like this, they form a somewhat interesting pattern, but I find that with something so repetitive, it helps to anchor the shot with something that stands out. For me, 
it's this banana that's going against the grain. Like a misunderstood artist amidst a society of conformists. It's a strange photo, and one that I would have never shot if it weren't for this photo a day challenge. That's the fun of it though. We're not even halfway through, and I've already gone bananas. It's day 40 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and inspiration comes from strange places sometimes. For today's photo, it came in the form of an Asian household staple, the plastic bag collection. We have a drawer full of them, but it's perpetually full, so this is the auxiliary grocery bag storage. I was drawn to this Crocs bag because of how absurdly green it is. When I looked a little closer, I saw these creases and crinkles and I wondered how it would translate to a photo. Now, a better content creator would save the results for part two, but seeing as more than half of you won't even make it to this part, I'll just leave them here. I personally like how they turned out. The images are fun, bright, and abstract. I don't know why, but it reminds me of Gamma Rays and the Hulk. The green is so green that it just looks radioactive. But let me know what it reminds you of. It's day 41 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and my sister is currently on a bit of a cleaning kick. She's been trying to organize my parents' kitchen, so she bought some new storage bins and racks. As she was putting things away, I saw this colander thing, and instead of helping her like a good little brother, I decided to get in her way and photograph it. She's gotten pretty used to my uselessness, and for some reason encourages my random bouts of creativity. See, I'm a sucker for the mundane. We see stuff like this every day, but rarely think twice about them, even though they're actually pretty cool. Sometimes we just have to see things in a new light, or re-encounter them under different circumstances to appreciate them. It's the same way with people, if you really think about it. It's day 42 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and there's a concerning amount of pee on this snow. Like for real, either the bunnies have decided that our backyard is their porta potty for this winter, or we've got a serial urinator on the loose. I only noticed it because I almost stepped in it trying to find today's photograph. It's been pretty cold lately, so I've been stuck inside. But I'm running out of things to shoot around the house, so I layered up and went for a walk. I was drawn to the melting snow even though we usually see it in a negative light. After all, it's not very Instagrammable in this state, with random blades of grass popping out and, of course, the pea stains. But the setting sun was hitting it at just the right angle to cast what I think are some pretty neat shadows that carry the shot. I think we have to go black and white though. The uh, yellow spots are a bit distracting. But let me know what you think, and I'll catch you next time. Peace. It's day 43 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and the best advice I can give to any of you young photogs out there is to not be peer pressured into shooting film. I developed a strong case of FOMO from watching unhealthy amounts of Grainy Days, Willem Verbeek, and Velandez during the pandemic. It had me thinking I might finally get good if I traded noise for grain. A few late night eBay shopping sprees, followed by the acquisition of chemistry that hopefully hasn't put me on some watch list, and numerous ill-advised film purchases later, and I still suck. I'm just a lot broker, and I now go through frequent grain withdrawals. Because it's so expensive, I can't bring myself to throw anything away. So I have boxes like these filled with film waste. I don't know what I'm saving it for, but it finally got some use today. Ironically, for a phone photo. It's day 44 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and I went digging through my old camera bag the other day and found this blast from the past. If you were on Instagram or Tumblr in the mid-2010s, you'll know this as the Brandon Wolfel Starter Kit. As a young, impressionable photographer in high school, I used this cheap acrylic prism for every portrait I shot until the orange and teal look became a meme. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, there was a time not too long ago where seemingly every portrait had to have some combination of fairy lights, neon signs, and or these pseudo-psychedelic flare things that you get when you hold a prism up to your camera lens. Despite it being a fad, I still think it looks pretty cool. The effect is better with a glass prism, but even with my cheap one, you can come up with some really fun shots. I low-key kind of miss this aesthetic. Sure, it was pretty strange in hindsight, but it makes me nostalgic for those simpler times which is kind of what that whole fad was attempting to capture. It's day 45 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and this is my snoot. In addition to having a funny name, it's a pretty useful piece of gear. I use it to film a lot of these videos. It goes on this cheap Amazon video light like so, and it helps direct and control the light. Without it, the light just kind of spills everywhere, which I guess 
works if you're going for that blown out look. I get blinded by this light at least once a week, but today I saw an opportunity amidst the searing whiteness. And that's the unnecessarily convoluted backstory to today's photograph. It's giving some strong Twilight Zone vibes. But let me know what you think, and I'll catch you on the flip side. It's day 46 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and welcome to the power of diffraction. Now, I fell asleep through most of my physics classes, so I won't pretend like I completely understand what's going on here. All I know is, I bought this piece of diffraction grating years ago for 60 cents at a local science shop and any light that passes through it gets separated into the different wavelengths that said light source is made up of. I remember using it in the store and thinking I was on to the next big photo trend. Unfortunately, this piece is way too small to use with a proper camera, so it's been collecting dust on my shelf. But now that I'm taking more photos with my phone, it's finally getting the love it deserves. I spent the last two hours going around my house shooting different lights with it, and I have to say, science is pretty cool. The effect is different with every light source, and so far, my favorite results have come from this RGB light strip in my room. It reminds me of the light painting I used to do when I was first getting into photography. Let me know what you think, and I'll catch you later. It's day 47 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and today's photo makes my head hurt. You see, this is my pop filter. It's supposed to take the power out of my plentiful plosives, and I use it to record all the audio for this series, including the audio you're hearing now. When light passes through it, this super interesting wavy pattern appears in the mesh. I don't know why it's happening or what to call it, but if you have any ideas, I'd like to hear them in the comments. I spent a few minutes shooting it, which wasn't all that difficult. The part that made my head hurt was the edit. I think it's a cool photo, but having to stare at it for more than five minutes makes my head start to spin. It was also really hard to tell if my edits were actually doing anything, so I had to keep squinting at the screen, which didn't help. I'm happy with how it turned out, though. It's abstract with a nice sense of movement. I think it looks like a shadow, but let me know what you see, and I'll catch you later. It's day 48 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and sometimes my favorite part about getting packages isn't getting the thing I ordered, but rather getting to play with the bubble wrap the thing I ordered came in. No matter how old I get, I always have fun popping these bubbles. And today it helped me knock off one of my stranger bucket list items. You see, I've always wanted to try my hand at ASMR, and I think this is as close as I'll ever get to an autonomous sensory meridian response. But I'm a photographer, not an ASMR-er. So let's get back to sucking less at phone photography, shall we? Today's photo is pretty simple. I placed a sheet of bubble wrap on my jerry-rigged light table, shot straight down, and it's pretty much what you'd expect. It's a photo of bubble wrap. Instantly recognizable, and yet surprisingly abstract. I like it, but let me know what you think, and I'll catch you later. It's day 49 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and I used to love watching the Power Rangers as a kid. The OG Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, not the newer dinosaur samurai stuff. I have no idea what that's all about, but my cousin grew up in that generation, and at some point when he moved overseas, I ended up with his Red Ranger mask. He says I stole it. I say I was just keeping it safe for him, I saw it today and thought of a cringy attempt at pop art I made back in high school. I decided to revisit this concept for today's photo, and after a few hours of playing around with colored gels, I present to you a proof of concept. I cheated and assembled it in Photoshop, and I think it's okay. It's a start, but it feels a bit flat. So I messed around some more and came up with this concept that I like a lot more. Yeah, it doesn't match up perfectly because I didn't use a tripod, but I think that adds to the character of this one. Let me know what you think, and I'll catch you later. It's day 50 of trying to suck less at phone photography, and we made it halfway through this challenge. To celebrate, I thought I'd brave the cold to capture some of that Christmas spirit. At least, that's how I would think if I wasn't such a hermit during the holidays. To be honest, I only left the house because my dad didn't want to see the lights alone. I took my camera with me, but I ended up just enjoying the festivities. Being out there reminded me that the best memories are often captured without a camera. So I walked away with zero photos and an idea. An idea that involves me putting up this fake Christmas tree at 3 in the morning, taking a second to admire my work, shooting it, showing you the photo that looks nothing like you thought it would, and finally, thanking you for sticking around. Seriously. Thank you. And a big shout out to all the people who have been following me on this journey. 
Now, I'm going to take a break to spend time with family and work on some longer videos. It's been a hell of a year. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.